So good morning and thanks to everyone for joining our second Ask a Technical Expert session. Uh, my name is Alex Partridge and I'm on the Account Development team here at ACL. I'm here today with my colleague David Noyan, who's from the Technical Support team, to address some questions around the machine learning capabilities in version 14 of ACL Analytics. There are constant advancements in machine learning and our goal is to make sure that algorithms can be applied in practice, even without a PhD in mathematics or data science. So these algorithms will allow more of our users to run more advanced and predictive analytics, yet still confidently explain findings and processes to regulators. So in ACL analytics, you can now run what's called the k-means algorithm through the classic command. This takes data without defined categories or groups and allows you to find and analyze the groups that form organically within your data set. This is the first machine learning command and we'll continue to add more with future updates in, later in the year, such as train and predict, which will allow you to run more complex analytics on your data sets. With that said, I'd like to move into some of the technical questions, which David will be walking us through. So to begin, since this is a, a new feature within ACL Analytics, what kind of documentation and training uh, in the Academy will be available to help us out with K-means clustering? Yeah, so at the moment we do have uh, documentation on cluster. It kind of goes through the main steps, the requirements, and um, I believe it gives you an example of uh, how you would execute the cluster. At the moment, we don't have any uh, courses on Academy yet. However, stay tuned. We do have some, we're expecting something near the end of January, 2019. So um, that's gonna be pretty exciting. And um, you know what, since we don't have um, anything in Academy, I can maybe give you a brief introduction on how uh, cluster works and um, they'll give you a better understanding. So you know what, let me uh, I have something prepared for us today. Okay, perfect. So how does k-means clustering work? It's, it's, people might think it's quite complex, uh, you know, with uh, being related to machine learning, uh, but it's actually not too bad. Um, this is the k-means clustering window here, and I can give you actually a live view of it uh, using AC Analytics. So here it is, um, k-means clustering. We have a new tab at the top for uh, version 14 of AC Analytics called machine learning and it has k-means clustering. So once you click on that, you'll see some basic parameters, the number of clusters, uh, which is your k-value that you would like to uh, analyze, um, the maximum number of iterations, and I'll go into detail with that one, and the number of initializations. And of course, you have your cluster on, your other fields that you wanna see in your results table. So this is quite standard, and I'll dive into a little bit further right now. Great. So, what is uh, the K in uh, K-means? So K is a number of clusters that you want, and what you would normally do is you would add this to a data set. So the number of cluster, clus, uh, clusters, sorry, uh, combined with the data set, and you'll get your number of clusters. And a nice example of this is, here's what it would uh, look like if we were to visualize it. You have cluster blue, and then cluster two, which is green, and then you have your centroid. And each, anytime you do cluster, you need to have a centroid placed. And then the centroid is based on the number of clusters that you want. So there are four main steps when you do the k-means clustering algorithm. The first one is to choose a number of clusters, which is your k value. You initialize the centroid first, which is that star you saw on the previous slide. You start assigning data points to each cluster through iterations. And you would calculate new centroids as you go along. And what that does is it helps to move your centroid to a more um, correct location and a more perfect location. So I have a brief example of this. So here we have a, uh, a sample table which uh, shows you the um, product quality. So we have a rating ID for a product, uh, we have the quality, and then we have the shipping speed, all right? So based on these fields, I'm gonna say that the K, uh, K means should be three. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this. So essentially we're gonna look for three clusters. So when you first start the uh, k-means clustering command, it's gonna initialize your centroids. And the centroids will be assigned at random points. And what's gonna happen later is, as you perform many iterations of this, that centroid will actually be placed at better locations. 
and based on that better location, we're going to get um, our end result. And the algorithm will improve on these initial assignments again. Um, and this is done by using the number of initializations parameter. So when I say number of initializations, I'm going to go back to AC Analytics right here. Number of initializations. So this is the number of times that uh, the cluster command will provide you a map and it will place your centroids on that map. And whatever, um, whatever I guess, initialization is best, it will start to use that one and it will start to go through the cluster command. All right, so let's go back here. So here you see how the um, centroids are initialized. You have uh, the green one on the left, the blue plus sign in the middle, and the blue star on the right-hand side. So this is the first initialization, okay? So once they are assigned, now you have to assign the data points to each cluster. So all those gray points are data points, and we need to know which cluster they should belong to. So how this works is the k-means will assign each data point to the nearest centroid. And this is done by calculating the distance between the data point to the three centroids. So if the green X is the closest one, that data point will be now connected to that cluster. And if you want to get a little bit more technical, the, the type of formula used to determine the distance is called a uh, Usilidin distance formula, and that's what ACL will be using. So the next step, step four, is you would calculate new centroids. Once all the data points have been assigned to a particular cluster, as you see here, um, at the top left, you have some data points that are green. And in the middle, you have some data points that are blue. And then on the right-hand side, you have additional data points that are in the lighter blue. So at the start, these are the closest centroids for these particular data points. But as you see, as we perform more iterations, what's going to happen is these data points will either be assigned to the same centroid or they will be assigned to a new centroid, and that's based on that moving distance or the average distance between all the points to the cluster. So the first, let me go back actually. This is the first iteration, right? Steps three and four done. And this is the first assignment of the data points to their centroids. Now, if you were to perform this iteration again, notice how the centroids are moving closer and closer to the to the data points. So you would repeat steps three and four until all the clusters reach convergence. And what that means is the data points are stable and no longer assigned to other clusters. And that's when you know um, your cluster command is complete. So let's take a look at the convergence here. So these are the data points that have been assigned to the particular cl clusters. And the question you might have is, okay, um, is there a possibility that when you run the cluster command, it'll just run forever, it'll be an infinite loop? No, um, there's actually a guarantee within the algorithm that there will be a point where the clustering will stop or the algorithm will stop and uh, they will not, you will not run into an infinite loop. And you can set the number of iterations that it will run based on the parameter in the cluster command. So let's go back to AC Analytics here. So this is what I'm talking about, the iterations, where consistently performed steps three and four, moving that centroid closer and closer to the average distance of all those data points. So if you have a very large data set, you might want to start off with a smaller number just for performance reasons. And if you want more accurate results, then you can increase the number of iterations. All right. So now you're thinking, okay, in that first example, those centroids kind of start off at a very weird location, right? Um, we can take a look at how we can fix that. So here, you'll see there's four initializations. The first one is the, at the top left, is what I showed you in the previous example. The second one at the top right has a different starting point. Bottom left has the centroids are a different starting point. And again, uh, initialization number four, different data points. So again, these are random. But to get the best results, 
you need to perform many iterations. And ACL will say, okay, out of these four iterations, which uh, centroids are closest to its cluster or closest to its data points? And out of these four iterations, number three looks the best. So ACL will take number three, and then it will start to perform all the um, initialize, uh, iterations. So here at the top right in the clustering command, number of initializations. This is what I was referring to. There's 10 here, but in the PowerPoint, I had four. So this is how you would say, all right, give me four starting points, and out of the four, give me the best one that matches uh, my data points. So this would represent this, these four initializations. So here, as you, as you see it, we chose number three, it's the best one, it's closest to all the data points, and this will give you the um, more meaningful uh, results. All right. And uh, that's a little high overview on the clustering. Um, hopefully <laughs> that was uh, easier to swallow there. <laughs> yeah, great, that looks good. Thanks for running through all that for us. Uh, I was just curious, how would we go about applying the cluster command to text? Well, generally, you can't cluster on character or data fields. So here, if you cluster on, it's only going to show you uh, fields that are either character or date and time, or sorry, um, that are numeric, because that's, that's what's being used in the calculations, right? Numeric values. Um, so at the moment, again, the cluster algorithm only accepts numbers and performs calculations on those numbers. Um, in the future, you will be able to use a text or numeric encoding, such as TF, IDF, or similar. And what that does is it, it uses machine learning and text mining as a weighing factor for features. Um, the gist of that TF, IDF, or something that's similar, um, is the weight increases the more times a term occurs in a document, right? And this is offset by the number of times a word appears in the entire data set. So if you were to use characters, uh, these would be um, the parameters. Now this offset that I just mentioned helps to remove those um, unimportant or those common words such as a uh, or the, where it might not be meaningful to you in your results. So what we're gonna do is in the near future, uh, we will actually be, uh, be including a script to help you do this and it'll be part of our machine learning toolkit. All right, that sounds good. And in terms of compatibility, obviously, a lot of our users have different computers. Um, can the cluster command be run on 32-bit computers? Well, that's a good question. Um, at the moment, 32-bit computers cannot use the new cluster command. It's only, uh, the cluster command can only run on 64-bit windows. But you know what, I don't see this being a, an issue um, as many operating systems these days are running on 64-bit operating systems anyways. Um, so this should be uh, a problem. Okay, great. And um, just moving away from clustering for now, looking towards some of the, the commands that we rolled out in future versions of analytics, such as train and predict. Mm -hmm. Uh, will these commands perform classification or regression? Yeah, so train will provide the ability to build both classification and regression models, where predict will enable you to apply both of those models to your data sets. Now, um, the train and predict isn't currently uh, available yet for release. Uh, we're looking to see if it's going to be in our, um, our spring release, so about May 2019. And you would find that same uh, command in the dropdown at machine learning. Uh, it'll be a new uh, option for you. Okay, that sounds good. And you mentioned the machine learning toolkit earlier. Uh, when will the will train and predict have a, a toolkit be released? Yeah, so we're also looking at May 2019 as well. So we're looking at the spring release. Um, one of the cool things about the machine learning toolkit is you might be wondering before when I was showing the k-means and how I was giving a value of three, and you're saying, why three? So if you don't know um, that information, we have, um, you can measure it by using the elbow, it's called <laughs> the elbow method, um, and it's actually a script that we will include for you to help give you, um, you know, starting parameters so that you'll know how to, to use your data and how to use the clustering and machine learning commands successfully. And sticking with trainer predict, will they provide 
validation measures as well? Yeah, for sure. So train will have folds parameters that you can use to set how many cross validation folds to use when training and tuning models. Um, this will become more clear once we provide the documentation for this and examples. And um, we, I believe, should also have something on ACL Academy as well in the near future. Great, look forward to that. And just going back to compatibility for a second, is there any sort of special computer hardware that's required to kind of train and predict? No, not necessarily. Uh, train and predict um, will be able to run on normal laptops, to be honest. Uh, what you're going to find is for the machine learning um, commands, such as train, predict, or even cluster, they will run a lot faster in computers with multiple CPU cores, as well as large amounts of memory. Um, and that's just because of uh, the type of um, algorithms that are being used. And what machine learning algorithm does train and predict use? So train automatically tunes and evaluates models based on a variety of machine learning algorithms. Um, then what it does, it keeps the best one based on the chosen scoring parameter. So predict uses a model's output by train. Um, so you would always train first, and based on the best model, you can either have predict use model A, for example, or model B. Um, so yeah. And what kind of predictions can the predict command make? Well, the predict command can you know, predict numeric values when using a regression model, and it can also predict categories when using a classification model. Those are um, you know, two of the main ones. And obviously our previous session focused on robots. Will cluster train and the predict command all work with robots? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so robots is, you know, uh, uses uh, ACL syntax, right? So it will use the same commands as robots. You can use this in ACL for Windows. Um, so cluster train predict won't be just a feature for ACL analytics, it'll be for our, um, you know, analytics platform with, uh, I believe, AX, uh, robots, and ACL analytics. Okay, perfect. And thanks for addressing all my questions today. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, thanks again to everyone for joining today. We hope this um, addressed some of your questions and provided additional clarity around the new machine learning capabilities within ACL analytics. So the next Ask an Expert session will be in February and with more details to come on the community page. We look forward to answering more of your questions in the next session. Thank you.